Alright, on to Priest Shadow Word Horror. Destroy all minions with two or less attack. It's four mana. The first thing I want to note is there's almost never been a AoE board clear or AoE. Let's say not say board clear. Let's say there's almost never been low impact AoE AoE cards added to the game. You know, Consecrate Light, Light Bomb. They've added new AoEs to the game. Uh, Excavate Evil, maybe not so high impact, but it's like no matter how weak an AoE spell looks. The first thing is to give it a lot of consideration because these things are game changers. This one in particular doesn't seem that strong. It's very hard to want to AoE this many two or less attack minions. And the Shadow Madness is, might kind of be a more versatile four mana kind of removal in the sense that you can steal steal a minion and maybe proc death rattles or uh, remove two like mid-range minions in a way instead of just a bunch of small guys. And Priest is a class that already has a lot of situational stuff. Maybe going, giving this card to another class that doesn't have so much board clear, it would make a bigger impact. Priest, we already have Light Bomb, Excavate, Holy Nova, so at some point, Priest is the class that's probably the least affected by adding another board clear. I'm not going to rate Shadow Word Horror too lightly, but you, you never really want to give like low amount of considerations to AoE board clears or AoE effects just because they, they have such a high impact on the game. Forbidden Shaping next. Spend all your mana, summon a random minion that costs that much. This one I don't think is that great either. The main thing about Forbidden Shaping is that a random minion that costs that much is never going to be as good as spending that much mana on, say, a good minion. And Priest is not really something... The most interesting cards... That con like The most interesting part of these Forbidden cards is that you can kind of shrink or increase the value of your deck depending on what you're playing against but forbidden shaping i never find it i i guess i never really find it to give that much of an impact if you play it as an early drop and i would say that you probably just want to if you want to increase the total value of your deck you'd rather just run something like you know, Confessor, Pills, Tristy, Sarah, those type of cards, or Cabal, and Priest is already so situational. I can see it being a pretty good arena card, just because in arena, most of the time, you know, you will you could drop it on turn 2 and get a 2-3, a 3-2, you know, whatever, and that's pretty much what you normally play anyways in arena, but in Constructed, I think, for the most part, you'd be better off running, running this with uh, just a big minion instead. Perhaps the most important thing for this card that it has going for it and constructed is that it kind of combos with well pyromancer pretty well because you can play it for whatever mana you have left after pyromancer and get that one point of alien herald vol ad <coughs> herald vladged i don't know how to pronounce it six mana five five bell cry on a one one copy of each of your other minions so kind of like a faceless manipulator attached to a body as well quite powerful emperor is not rotating with this i guess so if you want to think about it there's no it's extremely good with cards that have end of turn effects or cards that have uh death rattles the thing about this is it summons a one one copy so it's not full powered it's only one more mana than faceless so yeah, if it wasn't one one it would be obviously way too powerful but for the most part these combo cards the first thing you want to think about is is, is combo decks. Uh, you know, how can I make this card win me the game when I play it? Because that's how people, that's how these combo cards mostly have a super high impact and constructed. Uh, you know, can we face this a big charge minion? Can we, can we, you know, OTK something? Can we, can we use this sing to single handedly win us the game? So that's really what this is about when we want to analyze it first. Uh, I don't, I don't really see anything at first glance where I can say that this is going to like face us an arcane golem with power and just OTK someone or anything like that because it's a 1-1 copy. Uh, so it might just be reduced to say like a value minion that I want to use to play a lot of, with death rattles or things like Emperor or Prophet Velen. Uh, Prophet Velen is a very interesting card with this, but you can face this Prophet Velen and cost one less, so it's pretty flexible. And I'd say that it might not be the strongest card as of yet without seeing some cards that combo better with it. Oh yeah, and a lot of the good death rattles are going away. So there's no more Shredder in the game, there's no more... 
there's no more Sludge Belcher, there's no more uh, Haunted Creeper. A lot, it's just a lot of the very good Death Rattles are going away. Priest still has Dark Cultist though, so. And there's also Enzoth the Corruptor, which is a very interesting Elder God. That might work a lot with Death Rattles. Moving into Rogue, Undercity, Huckster, 2 mana for 2 2, Death Rattle, add a random class card to your hand from your opponent's class. I think this is quite good. It's easy to play. Rogue doesn't have that much incentive to play a two drop minion because it's because you can hear a power on, on two for Rogue and it for the most part generally will do okay. But Undercity Huckster, it's like free value. And you can really get a two three or three two for turn two, but this is you get a lot of free value from Undercity Huckster. Adding it's like as strong as maybe even stronger than the old novice engineers at a as a one two. It's just, it's basically two mana for two twos that give you another card. It kind of reminds me of Dark Peddler as well. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, you don't get to choose one. You don't get to discover a one mana card, but you can also get something with much higher value as well. So I think it's, it's a, it's quite a strong card. Very, very, it's actually a very strong card. Definitely constructed playable. Uh, four mana, three, two, zero, poisoned mind, the rogue legendary, battle cry and death row. Add a random toxin card to your hand. So the first thing is we want to go over the toxins. Uh, going, looking at these toxins, they, for the most part, they're as strong as, I think they're a little bit stronger than spare parts. Probably as strong as an average, maybe like a one mana spell, something like a cold blood or an arcane shot. You know, King's blood toxin cycles, cycles. You get two toxins per cat, like for this poison mine card, rogue uses spells very well with things like Gadgetzan. Um I think this is an amazing card. It might bring back Miracle Rogue, but I think this will be used in pretty much every rogue. It's just that powerful. All these like tempo rogues using, you know, prep sprint, uh, oil, you know, whatever. It just fits so well into that deck. Goes very well with Violet Teacher as well. So I, I, I rate this very highly, very good card. Thing from below, six mana, five, five. 5-5 uh, five, five with taunt costs one less for each totem you've summoned this game. This is really powerful. Probably one of the most powerful cards so far. This is what I feel is going to be a mid-range uh, mid shaman's power spike. You know, these mid-range decks, in order, in order to compete with control decks, you need to be able to have a chance of, say, killing a real control deck before they drag the game on too long. Uh, so Midrange Shaman, it's an archetype that used to be a thing, it's kind of gone away recently, but you know, it's really, it feels like really something that, that they're pushing a lot, especially with how strong some of the recent Shaman cards have been. So the thing, the thing from below is, you can kind of play this as a severely discounted tempo play. It's With Sludge Belcher going, going away, this is a very, very good replacement for Sludge Belcher in, mid, in Midrange Shaman. Uh, this kind of shaman uses hero power a lot, uses flame tongue totem. You know, a lot of it is based on hero powering and flame tongue toteming. It's a pretty spell heavy deck where you're not really dropping a minion each turn on curve, but but rather filling your curve in with hero powers a lot. Um, and you know, you use maybe effects like flame tongue, blow less to snowball the board. Uh, you use you just play efficient against control sometimes where. You don't really commit cards to AOE a lot, so this is like you're toming a lot. You can you can use this very cheaply a lot of times. It can be even zero mana card. Uh, this card, even if it's not in your hand, it still gets cheaper. So it's not something like a like the Knight of the Wild. It's more similar to Frost Giant in a way. Uh, I think the biggest downside that this card going is Lothab is going away. So you can't really play you know double thing from Blow or Lothab in the same turn and just try to kill someone the next turn. But, um, you know, I, I think this is going to be like Druid's worst nightmare, Dru Druid against Shaman. It's already a pretty hard match for Druid mid-range Shaman with, with flame tongue Totems and hex Hexes. And when you start slamming things from below for like three to zero mana, it's very hard for these kind of classes like Druid to come back from. And it has taunt, so it has tons of synergy with flame tongue Totem. And it's pretty good against aggro even, just because even 5 mana 5-5 five, five taunt is still not even that bad, and it's so easy to get it to that cheaply. Um, Master of Evolution, 4 mana 4-5, four, 
Battlecry, transform a random minion into a random one that costs one more. So this I feel is a much stronger version of Druid's, you know, 4-5 that gets 5 more health if your Cthulhu is at 10 or more attack. Maybe another part of the midrange shaman that works very well. It's a full powered yeti with Shredder going away. The most important thing is that it can... Not only does it transform a friendly minion into a random one that costs one more, but when you do that, it also heals the minion, right? So you can trade trade a minion into something and survive with a couple health left and then master revolution it. The most important thing is it's also like full powered. I mean, Recombobulator is full powered as well, but having a full powered 3-2 is a little bit different than having a four, full powered 4-5 four, for 4 because 3-2 is mostly their best on curve. They're pretty good late game, but for the most part, it's not really a threat. Yeah, it's a little bit too easy to kill. Where it's Master Revolution, it's it's a full powered 4-5 that also tr transforms into one more, and it's a I guess it's much better on the mana curve than something like a Recombobulator is, because Recombobulator, you're mostly using it either on curve or by the time that you want to use it late game, you're already kind of playing way too off on curve for the minion. It's a very, very strong card as well. Uh, another Shaman card, Holozeal the Ascended, 5 mana for 4, 6. Whenever your spells deal damage or store that much health to your hero, so it effectively turns your AoEs into huge heals, you know, your Lava, lava Burst into heal for 5. It's very strong. I'd say that this should be used in both Midrange and Control Shaman, uh, if Control Shaman is, is, still, is still a thing. Uh, you have a potential of using this kind of as like a heal bot slot in midrange shaman the reason why i think you can still use the midrange shaman is because midrange shaman is kind of like midrange paladin in the sense that it's a it's more on the control side of midrange if anything and this is almost full powered if not full powered five mana for four six you don't get much stronger than that as far as minions go for the four, for five mana anyways so the, the effect is almost tacked on for free and you know some of these midrange decks it's really cool because you know, you, mid-range decks you need to play from multiple angles. Against aggro you want to heal more and against slow decks you want to pressure more. And this is something that you kind of don't give up any power against You know, either way. Even heal bot, as good as it is, you kind of give up some some power against control. It's only a 5 mana for 3-3, three, three, as powerful as it is. But this is like almost like a full, full powered 4-6 for 5 while allowing it to, you to be really flexible. Even in Control Shaman, this is great. Uh, if you combo this with Elemental Destruction, you can even just get something like a Reno-like effect, full heal from almost any position. Very cool card. All three Shaman cards so far have been very good. <coughs> Next, I'm gonna go into Warlock. We have Doom. Uh, 10 mana, really cool card. Destroy all minions, draw a card for each. So it's basically twisting another for two more mana and draw a card for every minion that it destroys. Warlock, as a control deck, Warlock is a class that you can actually use Doom with because Draxus is still in, de in the deck, so Warlock, you, you don't really have to play it on the same fronts as other control decks. You can effectively dodge the kind of grindy style if you play Draxus early enough. You can also get like power rolling faceless combos with Doom. The main thing is it costs 10 instead of 8, so it's significantly slower. I, I, also another good thing about Doom is that if you draw enough cards, I'm assuming that almost all the decks that will use Doom are going to be Arena Jackson decks, just because of the nature of this card. You, know, you can split up more of your AoE with Arena, you don't want to use two Hellfires. You, you, maybe you can use just a whole bunch of different AoEs, you, you might even be able to use Doom. Doom and Twisting Nether, and Doom could draw you into Reno a lot, uh, and Arcane Golem combos, it could draw you into Draxes a lot. The main thing is that 2 mana is significant, and it might just be a little bit too slow to use over Twisting Nether. And also, it, it does, it still draws you into Fatigue sometimes. It's a very hit or miss card, I'd say. It might find its way into some niche, uh, into some niche like Reno. Arena Warlocks. Definitely interesting. Okay. Renounce Darkness. This is really a weird card. What it does, two mana, replace your hero power and warlock cards with another classes. The, the cards cost one less. <coughs> so there's two main ways you can think about this. You can think about this as a late game card to replace the warlock hero power and kind of like weird low value cards like Mortal Coil, maybe uh, 
sacrificial pack things like that are just sitting there situationally with other cards and you don't, you don't like game as you're going, going close to fatigue you don't want to be using your hair power i don't think it's just high enough impact for that and you already have draxus even though it's two man you can do other things i don't feel like that's going to be a main very relevant i guess the other way you can use renounced darkness from my perspective is you can try to use it as two of and try to troll it very early the important thing for this kind of style of Renounced Darkness decks is that you want to run a ton of Warlock cards because the cards cost one less. So what you're trying to do there is trying to, <laughs> I guess, get lucky, but basically trying to use it very early and then, you know, drop very cheap class cards of another cards of another class. So you just have a lot of Warlock cards, and <coughs> at that point you just maybe play, you know. Seven mana Tyrians, three mana True Silvers, or something like that. You just somehow, you just somehow get, I guess, the better cards. But I find that that kind of almost like some kind of Astro Communion style, where it's you know very very iffy at best. And your Warlock synergy, like class, has to be playable even without Re Renounced Darkness. It's kind of like almost playing two decks at once. Uh, next, we're gonna go to Warrior, and Zoth's first mate. 1 mana 1 1 pirate, uh, battle cry equipped a 1 3 rusty hook. So, this is kind of cool. I think it's kind of like an entry into this kind of upgrade pirate style of, of warrior. You can immediately get a very early weapon to start your pirate synergy going. Cool thing is, for the most part, we don't get to see a lot of the pirate lord being used, the one that's a 3 mana 3 3 that gives other pirates, I think, plus 2 plus 2. You know, plus two, plus one. Just because there haven't been a lot of pirates. For the most part, all current pirate decks are just based on a, a couple of cheap pirates, but there's not actually a lot of pirates. And this being another pirate might add the necessary amount of pirates to actually, you know, make a real pirate deck with, say, something closer to 10 to 12 pirates compared to just four or five pirates in your deck. Uh, immediately has synergy with upgrade when you have a 1 3 rusty hook with one upgrade, it turns into a 2 4 weapon immediately. Two upgrades turns into three five weapon, and it, you can immediately play on turn one. It's not just the one one. You, you know you can start swinging with the weapon. Uh, <clears throat> kind of might be the start of like a like a face pirate deck. You can also run this with Murloc. The Murloc, the Murloc that changes your hero power into another classes, just because most of the time as a face where you don't really want the armor up. It's gonna have a nice little curve there going. Uh, Ancient Shield Bear next. 7 mana 6-6. Six, six. If your Cthulhu has at least 10 attack, gain 10 armor. Uh, this could be kind of like a replacement for Shield Main. I I'd say that, that this being at 7 mana doesn't r really matter. Especially, it's more about like you having the extra Shield Main effect after after Shield Main wears out. Seems very powerful, I'd say. Cthulhu is, is very powerful. Originally I thought that Cthune, you might not want a lot of Cthune cards in these kind of control decks, but the more I think about it, you probably want to actually buff your Cthune up as early as possible, as big as possible, to get these effects activated and to make the actual Cthune as strong as possible as well. So I'd say that Ancient Shield Bear, it's, I guess, as a Warrior Cthune deck, you still want to be a control deck, and Cthune decks for the most part are kind of control decks as well, uh, kind of like anything you know Cthulhu is very similar to anything can happen right now so you, you need to survive a long time and I'd say most Cthulhu decks are gonna be kind of like a tempo control deck in a way like a controlly mid-range deck because most of the cards so far that I've seen that buff Cthulhu are like two mana two threes three mana three fours seven mana seven six mana seven sixes things like that so yeah you're gonna be running a lot of these, these like Maybe full powered, a little bit weak min minions, like tempo minions. So having extra seven mana six six that gives you this much armor is gonna be pretty good. <coughs> okay, next we have Tentacle for Arms. This card is got a lot of different opinions about this. Read a lot of stuff about this. Uh, it's a weapon, five mana two two weapon. Death row return to your hand. So it's kind of like head crack in a way where it never goes away and it's always two mana every turn. I read some good arguments defending this. You know, it looks most people said it was bad, so I read a couple arguments saying it was pretty good because, you know, head crack. The main comparison is that it doesn't. It's in a wrong. It's in the wrong class. Head crack. 
you know, Rogue doesn't really want to play a control style, whereas Controller does want to play a grindy control style. So I'm going to rate this card poorly, and the reason why is because if you think about it from another perspective, there's a very fine line in Hearthstone between Hmm. There's a very fine line in Hearthstone between like fatigue not mattering at all, say most of the matchups, and then fatigue really mattering, like some of the control matchups. And I guess what I'm saying is, even control wear doesn't need head crack to win the game if it's just two damage a turn, because you have burst combos with Alex Grom, uh, or even just Grom doing that much damage. And you can just fatigue people. Uh, just Kerr is still in the game. Just Kerr only costs, like Just Kerr mathematically turns your hero power into you know plus two, so four instead of two. This <coughs> this is like you have to spend five mana every two turns. Just Kerr is six mana. You spend it once, and it's attached to a body. So mathematically, this gives you two damage a turn every turn, kind of, and you have to spend the mana over and over again. Just card kind of gives you two more health every turn, and if you get two more health every turn, you can just simply fatigue everyone out. So you don't, like, even control wear doesn't need tentacle for arms to slowly, you know, slowly head crack someone over 15 turns or something. You might just want to rather have another AoE board clear or something, or another armor gain effect. I just think this is too weak and control wear doesn't need it. And also it's taking up your weapon slot. So when you're, if you want to do a two damage, you can't use other weapons that turn. 